temple today, and after listening to it and praying upon it, I, I did agree to it. Amen. So if you'll say amen at this time as Brother David Arias come forward with the testimony that he had. Amen. amen. I just invite you right now, Father, to your presence here in this building. And as your pastor has honored my request in your, your words, Father, in my heart, I just pray that, that the words that I speak are the truth of your spirit, Father. And do what you've promised me, Father, and change people's lives. Just ask these things in your Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm gonna try to uh, talk in three. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna try to talk in three different uh, sections. So, part one would be my past. Part two would be the conversion, and part three would be what God's doing with me right now. So, um, so he did. He did mention the things that I don't like. So again, I was I was a Christian at 13, but before I was even a Christian, I was already well established in. In sexual brokenness since four years old, and uh, by the time I became a Christian, um, you know I knew that the Lord was good. And from 13 to 16, I wanted to just tell everybody about Jesus. And I had junior high school and high school, and I even went to a private school, thinking that oh yeah, we can pray and everything else like that. And right away, I learned that I got persecuted, and as a young boy, I did not want to be. I actually got beat up and bullied and. and in my um, private school because I was a Jesus freak. Okay. And uh, you're weird, you're talking to yourself. And, and so anyhow, um, I, at 16, I, I, I just shut my mouth and I said, no more, I'm not talking about Jesus anymore because uh, I just want to be normal. And so I, I didn't want to do drugs, I didn't want to do drinking, but I already had this sex in my, as my drug. And so I became a normal high school and college person where um, I wasn't a big player, but I wanted to have a girlfriend just for the purposes of justifying, like, well, I'm a girl, I got a girlfriend, so I want to have sex with my girlfriends. And so, um, and as he mentioned, uh, and this is how the Holy Spirit just gives us warnings. He gives us warnings because he wants us to turn towards him. That's right. And so I remember my dad had a heart attack at the same time as my girlfriend announced to me that she was pregnant. I remember arguing, arguing, start, hey, God, let's do this little thing here. So I thought, you know, if, if the baby, if my dad dies, I want the baby to live. But if, 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 if my dad dies, I want the baby to live. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, I probably said it backwards, but those are the kind of, I mean, you talked about living in this flood, you know, the flesh or the spirit. I was in the flesh, and that sounds so stupid and distorted when I hear about it in hindsight. I got married. I told my ex-wife about my um, addiction, um, and she knew about it. We, we were engaged for a year and a half. We got married. We were married for 11 years. And here's what happens: is when when things start happening, and if you're not strongly rooted in Christ, then you start going back to the old way. So we couldn't have children. We couldn't have children. We tried for six years, and then we we did all the medical procedures that I didn't that we couldn't afford, and we were trying to have children and. You know, we weren't really seeking God, we were, but um, through that, I started, um, I had my own business at that time, and, and she's quit, so then we had financial pain, and then that was 2009, 2010, when everybody was going through a bunch of financial pain, and uh, I'm almost out of my three minutes, so now, through that, um, I went back to my addiction, and, and um, without going into specifics, the the little thing when we were engaged, our pastor said, are you having sex? And we confessed to it. And they said, the little thing, he said, don't, you, you guys have to be pure while, while you're engaged. And the one thing that we did not hold in our engagement is the one thing that I did when I cheated. So um, for two years, I, I tried to save my marriage. We tried to save my marriage. And that's when the Holy Spirit started to talk to me. That's when the Holy Spirit said, I want you to set the captives free. You're listening, your ears are muffled. You are not listening to me. You are not laying everything down. Um, and why are you wrestling with me? I have a great harvest for you, one that you cannot understand. Oh, yes. And that was 10 years ago. 
So after my divorce, I gave up again. I said, forget it, I'm done, I lost my wife, well, I almost lost my business. Uh, we actually got naturally pregnant, and that was just kind of like the thing that just killed me, because we went eight months, and we announced to the church, and we were all happy, and we were already messed up. So um, so for six years, I had a fear of all the Holy Spirit, because I had a new girlfriend, and of course, I was doing the old day. So now here's the transformation. So hopefully that was only three minutes. <laughs> we agreed, we were trying to, we started praying together. We'd already been going to church. Because, you know, we all know we can fake church. Okay? Every one of us can fake church. We show up and, you know, I, I play drums in the worship team. And uh, I was very slow to pick that up again. But um, uh, we, we, my, my pastor, my church is very small. It's 250 people. So in our church, in our California, that's a smaller church, I think. But um, he asked, you know, we're going to have a ministry on, on financial peace. You know, Dave Ramsey. And he didn't have anybody to teach it, and I knew he didn't. And uh, I just said, you know, Pastor, after about three or four weeks of him announcing that we're going to start, we're going to start. He couldn't start because he didn't have anybody to lead it. And I had already done it when I was with my ex-wife. And that was the first step. That was where God said, ooh. And when I led that class, I knew that I needed to tithe. I had done it before, but I'd never done it consistently. I'd never done it month after month after month. And so, you know, I, I don't say it to brag, but I believe that. Fifteen months ago, when I started doing that, the Lord said, Oh, you're going to trust me with your money, because you never really have. So now that I see that you trust me with your money, let's go on to the other thing that you really don't trust on me, which is your sexuality. Because, of course, we all want great sexuality in our lives, but we do it wrong. We don't do what God's told us. God told us to do it in the covenant of marriage. In the covenant of marriage. So, now here's the next part. As we were praying, my girlfriend and I were praying, and like, the Lord, show us. And we knew we weren't going to get married because it just wasn't working. And we knew it wasn't working after five and a half years. And, and she said, let's just start dating other people. And I said, great, that sounds great. And the Lord stopped me, literally, in five different situations with five different women, none of them which I had sex with. But he said, you are not going to date like this anymore. Uh-uh. You're not going to do this. And, and so much so that one date I had, I was in the hospital that night. I thought I was having a heart attack, and I had to cancel my date. So here's the thing that I really think, because everyone says, what changed, what changed, what changed? Because I've struggled with this all my life. I'm 51. I have struggled with this my entire life. I told my ex-girlfriend when she told me she was going to go on a second date with a different person. I told her, you know what? I don't want to date you anymore. I want to... I want to talk about marriage, and I don't want to have sex again until we are married. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think, and this is what I love here, there's the Blind of Judah, is his YouTube channel that I love here, and there's a preacher that was talking, that was kind of like saying, could you imagine God, God's got all his angels behind him, this legion of angels, right? And all of a sudden, Dave Barrios decides to take a prayer, and, and he wasn't talking about me, of course, he was talking about someone else, and, he's, and it was like God was saying to all the angels, did you just hear did you just hear what he prayed? Did you just hear what he asked? And I think that's when God said, that's what I want. You want marriage? And you want the covenant of marriage? And you want to wait to get married? That's what I'm going to do for you. And I, my girlfriend and I, he's like took her away as far as from the east and the west. She got another boyfriend. And although we talked a few times, done. And, and through that, all I did is I got on my knees and I'm like, Lord, how am I going to do this? So I started fasting. And is it right? Is it right? I'm sorry. I did not know the scriptures. I did not know all the stories about David and Goliath. I didn't know about Abigail. I didn't know about Gomer. I did not know about Naaman. I, did, I mean, I, you barely know these stories. And I'm like, well, how, how do I not know these stories after being in the Bible all these times? So now, last three minutes. Sorry, Pastor. I hope I'm not going too long. The Holy Spirit has totally bombarded me with promises and His Word. I, think I probably heard from Him five times in two years when I was going through my divorce trying to save my marriage. I have heard from Him so many times. I have heard so many promises that it becomes overwhelming. And so when you have that, like Jeremiah, I, when you have so much promises that the Lord is building, He starts telling you things, and you have dreams, 
you, what, are you, what are you going to do? And so I had a dream of, of traveling. I had a dream of the, of the road stopped and there's a river going through and there's no more people driving that way. But there's a bridge. There's a bridge that's broken, but there's a car miraculously going across the bridge. My daughter just told me as I've been gone, she said, Dad, I had a dream that, that I was with Jesus and with God. And, and we were walking over and the whole world was dead. Everything was black. And all of a sudden, as Jesus came, everything turned to green. And, and I saw we were walking over a bridge and God was creating the bridge. And as soon as we saw one person who had faith, who had no faith, the bridge started shaking. And, and it was like, you know, why do you not have faith? Why do you not have faith? And so, I'll end on this. I, I, never, I never even knew of Cheyenne, Wyoming until two weeks ago. <laughs> okay, I'm from California, and, I, and I, I have to say I've traveled pretty well, thank God. But this is where the first two, this, you are my third city. Okay, so the first two cities, I went to Nevada, and I went to Ogden, Utah. And I, my, my friend of a friend in Nevada and my really good pastor friend in Ugman. So I stayed there for four days and I like, I don't have anybody responding back from Shine. I, I, I had sent a few emails. I had made a couple of connections trying to, nothing. I, I got to go. I can't stay, you know. And so as I was driving, I, I remember crying that morning saying, Lord, I'm going. I don't know who I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. And your first lady picked up the phone and she says, oh, we have a place for you. And she did not know who I was. And I'm crying, and she told me to drive right to a pastor's place. And I spoke with him, and he, I don't know who you are, but in faith, he said, let me put you up for a night. Yes. And, and so to me, that was an answer to prayer, and, and believe it or not, that night I actually spoke in front of a church. <laughs> I don't know how I did. And you know, I'm way past my time. I just want to say the last thing that God told me when I'm doing this, as he said, because I didn't do this in the first two cities, he said, you need to pray. You need to leave a breadcrumb of where you are leaving. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have this permission from your pastor, but I have permission from the Lord that he said, David, through you and through my spirit, that's what he's done, right? He takes broken people. He equips the call. He doesn't, he doesn't call the equipped. So if any of you would like prayer, I'm supposed to do that. Can I do that for anyone right now? I'm going to just pray for your church and then I'll go. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this pastor and this first lady. Father, they don't understand what an answer to prayer that it was for me to have a place to come. The power of your spirit, Father, is so great. And when I came Friday night, I was crying within a minute or two of hearing all the praises that, we were, that this church was giving. And so, I, Father, I just ask that, that your Holy Spirit just bless this church for their faithfulness. Bless their growth, Father. Allow them, allow them to reach people, Father, as you see fit. Give this believers this body of believers, Father, the power to know that you live here, that your spirit lives here, and lives are being transformed. I thank you, Father. I thank you for all the things that you've done. How can we not be thankful, Father, for all the things that you do? I just, I'm done. Thank you, guys. Amen. Sometimes you just have to tell the goodness of the Lord.